Welcome to another awesomely infused episode of Monday Movie Pickup. Alright, it's that time of year again where Barnes & Noble has all their Criterion Collection Blu-rays uh, half off for the entire month of July. I do it every July, every November, but I also really wanted to quickly talk about everything, everywhere, all at once. So this is currently my favorite movie this year, one of the wildest experiences I've ever had in the theater. If you have yet to see it in theaters, uh, go see it on the big screen if you can, but it is available on home video now, so you can see it at home as well. It's a great movie. It's a crazy movie. It's the type of movie that you've always wanted to see, but you never really thought was going to be possible on the scale that they did it. It's just fantastic. Can't wait to check it out again. Of course, this is the uh, Walmart edition, which is really awesome because the inside is also the same cover, which they did not do for the Spider-Man edition. This is the 4K release. I recently did get a 4K player, so now I'm able to see some of the 4Ks in uh, the pristine condition that they were meant to be seen. Of course, um, I'm not going to upgrade everything to 4K at this point. I've made it known in the past that I'm not going to start collecting 4K. But uh, some of the most, you know, my favorite movies I pretty much already own on 4K just because of their specific editions like Back to the Future, Ghostbusters. So a lot of movies are, I already own on 4K. Anyways, in the future, I think I'll just kind of watch out to see if I want something on 4K. If I do, I'll get it. But for the most part, stick in the Blu-ray. Especially for some movies that I don't really go back to a lot. I don't need everything on 4K and everything is not going to get released on 4K. I should also show you the inside which does have some disc art here. And um, like I said, everything everywhere all at once. I, I'll be shocked if this doesn't end up being my favorite movie of the year. So of course we got the Criterions here. Sullivan's Travels, I actually, this is the first time I had seen the movie. It's fantastic. It's about making movies. It's about uh, movie stars, movie producers. And uh, also just about, you know, this idea that uh, someone who is uh, of the richer variety, of the upper class variety, trying to be someone of the lower class variety, and realizing that every step of the way there's really no way to escape his position in life, in the same way that it's impossible for the main uh, lead of Veronica Lake, how it's impossible for her to escape her life as well. It doesn't take itself too seriously, it doesn't become too moralistic or anything. I have the Life Aquatic here, so uh, this was the only Wes Anderson film I did not own from the Criterion Collection. Uh, every time I went to Barnes & Noble it was never available. I didn't really go seeking the movie on Amazon or anything like that. I was like, you know what, it'll show up at our store, store eventually and I don't want to pay the extra shipping cost if I don't have to and finally it showed up for the 50% off sale, so bought it. Now I'm done with Wes Anderson from the Criterion Collection, every one of his movies except for Isle of Dogs and uh, the newest one, French Dispatch, which I assume at some point will probably hit the Criterion Collection anyway, so I'm not going to buy the usual Blu-rays. Uh, I have here The Fisher King, so another Robin Williams movie I've never seen. There's actually a lot of Terry Gilliam stuff that I've never checked out before, but I remember someone telling me the synopsis of this movie, and that alone got me very interested in the film, so gonna check it out. Robin Williams, he never really did any wrong as far as some of his, uh, you know, movies go. Hell, I like RV. I mean, I like him in RV. The movie's not good, but I like him, so that's how far I will go for Robin Williams. I mean, I think he's great. I think he was a great actor. Uh, we have Thief with James Caan, who uh, recently passed away, sadly. And I realized I hadn't seen a lot of James Caan movies. You know, The Godfather, Elf, of course I've seen those, but I'd never seen uh, this one that everyone was bringing up after he died, Thief. A uh, Michael Mann film, it had a Criterion collection, so uh, I made sure to buy it right away, you know, before possibly it would sell out because of his recent passing. And i uh, gonna check it out soon. I meant to check it out uh, the same night I bought it, just ran out of time, but I do want to see this one. Uh, hear a lot of good things. I've seen some, uh, a lot of people were sharing about this movie, so I've seen a couple scenes from it. I'm like, it looks fantastic, like the type of movie I would love. Coen Brothers film, Miller's Crossing. There's a few uh, Coen Brothers movies that have hit a Criterion Collection. Again, it's another Coen Brothers movie I haven't seen. I've seen quite a few, uh, but you know, I'm trying to go through their filmography now, and this is one that I just have never gotten to. This, Barton Fink, uh, The Hudsucker Proxy, all these movies I own now, and I'm like, cool, I could do a perfect just uh, straight through their filmography, see everything, see what they're all about, and I hear that this is one of their best movies. Uh, but speaking of directors I'm collecting every film of, Martin Scorsese. So, The Last Temptation of Christ, uh, starring Willem Dafoe, 
Uh, another Scorsese movie I've never seen, and, you know, trying to get as many Martin Scorsese movies as I can. Quite a few of his movies are available through the Criterion Collection, and I, uh, this one's been available for a long time. I've passed up on it many times, but this was finally the time to check it out. Of course, it was very controversial when it came out. We have another uh, cult classic here, The Repo Man. And uh, this is a movie that I've also passed up many times. I think for a long time I mistakenly thought this was a horror movie, but it looks like it's more of a sci-fi movie. I might have to watch that with my friends, uh, because that seems like the type of movie that we would all enjoy together. And then last but not least, I have Bowling for Columbine. I've passed this one up a few times. Uh, of course, I've said before on the show, I'm a fan of Michael Moore. I have a couple of his movies, uh, Roger and Me, Fahrenheit 9-11. So Bowling for Columbine, I've seen many times before. It's a, you know, it's a well done documentary. And, you know, I know people kind of have their opinions about Michael Moore one way or another. But I think I, I, you can't deny, though, that the movie is very good at uh, telling the story that it has to. Okay, then I have a bunch of Kino releases here. This is also from a sale that they recently did. Uh, Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Now this is one of those movies that I think a lot of people always point to as, oh, one of the worst of all time. But I, I think the people who made the movie were intending for it to not be that great. I mean, look at the title, Billy the Kid versus Dracula. What do you expect? This is also one of those movies that I didn't expect actually had a Blu-ray release. Witness for the Prosecution, I've actually seen this before. Uh, great uh, courtroom drama. Uh, Charles Lockton is uh, hilarious in the role. He's he's great, he's serious, but he's also hilarious. He's kind of got a good mix of it all. I've heard a lot of this movie. I haven't actually ever seen it. I know it has a three hour runtime, so it's one of those things where I'm like, I really have to plan out when I'm going to watch it. Here's a movie that I wasn't originally going to get at first because I actually own the Blu-ray already, but you know, it's a movie I love so much, I figured I might as well get the Kino edition as well. I have Losing It, which is best known for being uh, Tom Cruise's first uh, appearance in any movie. I don't think he really has a starring role per se, but he is in the movie. And um, I was trying to get all the Tom Cruise movies for a while. I actually have quite a few. I don't have, I don't think I have too many left to go. So this was one of those weird obscure ones that again, I didn't realize Kino had actually released on Blu-rays. And I have here some Buster Keaton collections, Sherlock Jr. and The Navigator. Uh, this is going to be volume two actually, because they have volume one, The General and Steamboat. Uh, Steamboat Bill Jr. So I've seen Sherlock Jr. I've seen the general um, I haven't seen the other two and I believe that there's actually some different editions of these released by Kino now uh, I believe with other movies for some reason I think they released the general in a different release with a different film and I think the same was done for I believe I believe Steamboat Bill Jr. if I'm correct, but who knows? I mean, how am I gonna track down all the Buster Keaton movies? I don't know. Uh, I know that they have a volume three and a volume four, so I'll probably just watch out for those. Uh, I've seen the Buster Keaton movies before because technically you can really access them on YouTube pretty easily, but I figured I, w I should probably watch them in better condition um, than what I originally saw them as years ago. And uh, even these have some uh, special features on here, some different things about uh, Buster Keaton and his life. And then last but not least, here is Mad Max. Now Mad Max has quite an interesting history as far as like home video releases go. Um, I own, if we go up here real quick, so I own this edition right here of Mad Max, which includes all the Mad Max movies, uh, including the original. And yeah, I uh, also now have the Kino edition, but there was also a Shout Factory edition that uh, out of print now, so unfortunately it goes for way higher prices. Uh, but yeah, mostly got this for all the different special features that are not included in the High Octane collection. Uh, so Mad Max has been released several different times, and what's cool about this release is that it still had the slipcover. So Mad Max, I mean, you can get this movie in so many different places, so many different varieties. Maybe I'll watch it with the original audio, because I don't think I've actually ever seen it with the original Australian voices. But that's everything for this week. I will be back next week because there's actually more up on the shelf, but I don't want this episode to be going on too long. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching the video and special shout out to Lauren, Anthony, Anna, Kirsten, Spencer, Lucas, Ryan, and Robert for supporting me on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive blogs and videos, and for just $7, you can get your own monthly movie review. I hope you stick around, Cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.